Wait, Jeremy, how did you get in my room? I speed ran. Uh... This is my friend Jeremy. It's a keyboard wonderland. He doesn't have a custom keyboard, but he wants to get into building them. Why? Because they look cool, sound cool, and most importantly, feel cool. I bet you also want to get into building custom keyboards, and I'm gonna get into that very soon. But what he doesn't know is that I'm gonna be making him build it himself. <laughs> yep. Oh! Go, go, go. go. And on top of that, he has to leave in just over an hour and a half. So we're doing a bit of a speed run here to show building a keyboard isn't actually that hard. Now, Jeremy has literally no idea where to start, and I bet you watching this probably don't either. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down how to pick your switches, your keycaps, and most importantly, get into lubing. No, 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 it's not lube. We're going to get into that soon. All together to build your first custom keyboard. Now, this probably looks incredibly intimidating, but trust me, we're going to get through this together. First step is going to be getting Jeremy familiar with keyboards. Now, you at home might not have the luxury of trying out a bunch of different keyboards. So for that, I recommend going down to Best Buy or something like that. Just try all the keyboards, tell them you want to buy one, but you don't have to buy one. Figure out what type of feel you want. So first, we're going to take him down memory lane, and he's gonna try and feel some keyboards. So when trying to figure out what type of keyboard you want, there's a couple different options. There's linear, tactile, and clicky. What trying these is gonna do is it's gonna give yourself a little bit of groundwork to go off of when you choose to buy your switches. Generally, most people gravitate towards linears, but we'll get into the rest of that soon. Is there something weird about that one's spacebar? This keyboard is from my ceramic keycaps video, and what Jeremy doesn't know is I've put a pen spring in the space bar that weighs like, I don't know, 10 times more heavy than any other spring, so it's super hard to press. It's a really heavy boy. Can no. you press it easily? <laughs> no, I cannot. This one has the most interesting chassis to me in terms of the look. There's so many keyboards to choose from. How about, how about just take the one that you use? Nope, yeah. nope. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out whether or not you like linears, whether or not you like tactiles, whether you like a clackier board, a thockier board. There's a bunch of different types of keyboards you can go for as a beginner. Now, as I mentioned, there are so many keyboards to choose from. And if you're looking for a keyboard specifically and don't care about the process of building it, then I recommend watching the video in the top right. Don't don't watch that yet. Just watch the rest of this video. It's entertaining, I swear. So what you're trying right now is an electrocapacitive keyboard. It's different to all the other mechanical keyboards in that it's not actually mechanical. Don't tell. It definitely has that like creamy sound mm -hmm. and like fucky feel. And I think I like that better than the tactile. Fair enough. Now I'm gonna have Jeremy try just a couple different keyboards so that way he can narrow down what specific type of linear switch he likes. Now, as I mentioned before, if you go into a Best Buy and try out a bunch of different things, then maybe a keyboard with red switches might feel too easy to press. That means you want a heavier spring. Now, maybe a keyboard with red switches is just perfect. So that means you need a lighter spring. That's the type of thing that we're trying out here. This is a really satisfying space bar. Like, yes, yeah, super deep. Dun, yeah. dun, 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 dun. Ooh. So now that you've tried all of them, which do you think is the most expensive? I might guess this one, okay. just because it's wooden, and okay. I feel like there's a particular artistry that goes with that. Sure. Or maybe this one. There's just something about the build that it feels like, I mean, they all are solid. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that one is the most expensive. Oh! Yeah. It's uh, cool. a more solid type of aluminum. Okay, um, okay, <laughs> well that's like kind of what I was trying to say. Yeah. So after figuring out what type of switches we want, we need to figure out what type of layout we want. Well, maybe we should have figured that out first, but who's counting? I don't even know how to count. Ooh, yeah. Now, if you don't have a hippie at home that can just go through his closet and present you with options to pick from, then that's where you need to do a little bit of your own research. Now, I can't do this research for you. That's why you're here. Oh, wow, you're watching the video. Good job. I'm so proud of you. There's a bunch of different keyboard layouts. Now, you could go with something full-sized. You could go with something 65%, which is with the arrow keys. You could go with something without the arrow keys, or maybe something with the F-Row or without the F-Row. What are we thinking? Anywhere between this okay. and this. Okay. Do you play games? I do play games. What type of games do you play? I play, I play a lot of games. Like what? Um, well, at the moment, I can't think of anything. 
but um, I play a lot of games. Okay, so a requirement is games. I think what I've decided is that you need a 65% keyboard or 75% keyboard with linear switches, probably. Lighter, maybe, maybe on the yeah. lighter side. And uh, we're just gonna have to go from there. Let's go. So we've narrowed it down to roughly two options. We've got contestant number one, the NJ80, the budget badass, if you will. Then contestant number two, the IQNix OG80 dark side exclusive prototype, but which one does Jeremy want? I prefer this one. Oh, he chose the NJ80. It's got a knob. Knob content. Now, something you might notice, uh, it's not built. Yeah, you're gonna have to do that. Except the knob. <laughs> so, uh, how long do we have left? In between an hour and an hour and a half. Okay. Ah, 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 ah. So, generally when you get your keyboard, it's gonna have a bunch of different accessories, and let's run through those real fast. So that's a switch oh, puller. Oh, switch puller, and this is the keycap thing. Yep, that's a keycap puller. And then the cord. The cord. What is that? A paper with words on it. What do we do with papers with words on it? There you go! <laughs> So the first step for building this keyboard is going to be preparing your base, kind of like with a pizza. Now on the back, you'll notice that this keyboard is wireless. So there's a little switch on the left and then flip it around. Oh, it's RGB. Normally you'd lube all your keyboard switches and that'd be a lot of fun. We have literally no time, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna make you lube one switch, otherwise, you don't get any. So these are the switches that you're gonna be using. We've got switches from Wuche Studios. I don't know what they are. They are in my bag, but they are a linear switch. They're of a relative weight that you like based on the switches that you've tried. Oh yeah, I'm here, by the way. But go ahead and take one out. I wonder if Kinetic Lab sent me more lube or not. What do you think of them? Um, they're very cute. And now I'm gonna show you the basics of how to lube a switch. Keep in mind, this isn't a full tutorial, but if you need a little bit more help, then I'll leave a link in the top right, or if I ran out of space, in the description. So, to lube a switch, first step is taking it apart. We've got this guy, which is a switch opener that I pulled out of my Hippiotech lube pouch. Link down below, exclamation point merch for in the keyboards. chat, gamers. There's holes and there's holes, so I think the holes meet the hole. Yeah. So you want to make sure that these guys go up into the claws from the, you know? Oh! So oh. he's pressing the top up. Yep. Oh! Oh no. oh no! Oh, that's supposed to happen though, right? Yeah, that's supposed to happen. Okay, okay. It, we've got a lube palette and a lube brush. Now that brush is kind of a bit big, honestly, but I'm giving it to you anyways because, you know, why not? Now, when getting some lube on your brush, less is definitely more. You just want the lightest layer possible. First, let's start with the housing. So grab the housing, and now you just want to brush a light layer of lube on each side of the slider. The slider is the plastic bit on the right. So do three strokes and then flip the brush on the other side, then three strokes, bing, blong, boom. And then go lightly around the lobe. Perfect. Boom, one step done. Okay, now we gotta rush. Now you gotta grab the stem, the stem, this, with the stem holder. And this and is the stem, the stem holder. holder. Like I don't know so. if that's gonna work with this one. Oh yeah, that kind of works, right? Now for the stem, basically all you do is get a light layer of brush and then brush all of the contact points. It's nothing too crazy. Now usually we would lube the springs, but uh, for some reason we didn't. Now generally I recommend bag lubing them, however you can brush lube them as well. So then we're gonna put the switch together. First start with the spring on the tube. Now next put the stem on, yeah, like that and then press all the way down until you hear a click. Oh, and now does it work? We got it lubed. Lubed. We forgot a step. I'm gonna make you lube the stabilizers. Ha 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 ha, there's oh. no escape. Oh. There's like such light ticking that it's almost not even worth lubing. So we're just gonna put them in and then adjust based on if they tick later. So yeah, the stabilizers on the NJ80 were so good factory lubed that we did not need to lube them ourselves. Now. If you were at home and you were like, please, Hippio, please, I need to lube stabilizers, please help me. There are a lot of amazing tutorials out there that I don't need to go through. Uh, just search how to lube stabilizers. You're gonna get through this. I believe in you. Now it's time for the switches. Yay! So the metal bits are the pins. Okay. You need to line them up with the holes in the okay. socket. Okay, now press down. Woo! 
Okay, so try and do it a bit more gently because you don't want to accidentally pop out a hot swap socket. Now, here's how to put switches into a hot swap keyboard. If you got a soldered keyboard, I'm sorry, uh, rest in peace. Uh, that actually sucks. So anyways, hot swap means that the keyboard can have its switches replaced without needing to solder or desolder. When looking for a keyboard, make sure you go with the hot swap keyboard. Wait, you haven't bought a keyboard yet, have you? Oh gosh, oh no. So what I like to do is you wanna support the switch kind of like the whole way. So like I do it like that to make oh. sure that you're applying top and bottom pressure and that it doesn't like click in. Usually I recommend you support it from the back, but I don't wanna take this keyboard apart because it's got a battery in it and it's gonna be a whole ordeal. That's what she said. <laughs> so now we need to do roughly 82. Let's go. Uh-oh, bent pin alert, bing bong. Bent pins tend to happen if you aren't gentle enough when putting it in or if the pins were already bent. Now, bent pins are important to keep an eye on because if you put them in, then they might pop out a hot swap socket, which would suck because then you have to solder it back in. The final switch, not long left on our clock. What type of keycaps do you want? Colorful font. Come with me into my closet. Uh, these might work, these but the font kinda... is kind of gross. Oh. Oh, I... that's not bad. You like the banana? I kind of. I like yellow. I really like yellow. Oh. That reminds me of a different character I've had on the Hibiotech <laughs> channel. Now, when picking out keycaps, it's entirely stylistic preference. However, there are some differences between profiles and sound, etc. But we'll talk about those in a second. Jeremy has decided that he likes these, the Eidobau MA Blue Cat keycaps. He decided that based on trying a couple of different keycaps on his board, and I figured you don't really need to see that, but he says they sound Thaki. Now, in general, you'll see a lot of keycaps that are a lot of different prices, and there's not really a best way to sum it all up without a 15-20 minute video, but essentially get what you think looks cool and just make sure that the layout will support your keyboard. Now, next, we have to parse through this whole entire big smorgasbord of keycaps and then put them all on the keyboard, and we're going to do that in 20 minutes. In 20 minutes? <laughs> Oh gosh, okay. You know what, here's here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do magic, and then if there's any interesting bits that happen, then we'll cut into it. Jeremy, we've got five minutes left. We can do it. We're almost done. Go, oh, go, oh. go. Wait, am I blind though? I feel like there's no letters left. There's just numbers. Oh, 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 oh. It was in hey. the box. Hey. The final key cap of the speed run. This board is looking so clean, all right? Oh, you built a keyboard! Oh, shoot. It feels really good. Oh, and the sound. Hello. That is so deep. That's insane. You built a keyboard in an hour and a half, and it's that good. And it's that good. Jeez, and anybody could do that. Would you do it again? Oh, I would do it again. Did you have fun building a keyboard? I had so much fun doing it. Now, what would you say to everybody at home that might be thinking about building a keyboard, but is too unsure of where to start? Two things. One, just be practical. If it's in your budget, hey. If it's not, don't do things out of your budget. Two, watch Hippio Tech, because hey! he, he knows what he's doing. But now you know what you're doing. And I ask a lot of questions, and that's okay. And it's great to ask questions. If you have questions to ask, then make sure you join my Discord, link down below. It's a great place to ask questions, but don't email me. Please don't email me. So many of you email me and I can't answer every question. So Jeremy made a beautiful keyboard and you can too if you follow along at home. Now you could get this exact same keyboard, which is linked down in the description, or you could switch it up and build your own using some of the knowledge that you got from this video. If you did, then, you know, send me a little tweet at Hippio Tech with the keyboard that you built with this video. That would be actually kind of fun. Anyways, back to Jeremy. I know, I gotta go. You gotta go. Goodbye. Go. Goodbye, Jeremy. See you later. Miss you. You forgot your keycaps. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, Jeremy. Leave the rest behind.